All right, everybody, welcome back to Plasma 1945's channel. Today we are continuing with part two of our unguided rockets video about Russian and Soviet aircraft and the amazing unguided rockets that they attach to almost anything and everything they can fly because they work. You point, you shoot, and off they go. Russians have developed a large number of unguided rockets. This started out after World War II, where the Katusha made a big difference for the Russians. That was their MLRS system. And they've gone into a whole bunch of varieties and sizes. Anything from eight centimeter all the way up to massive 24 centimeter rockets. Now let's get some basics down as we get into this video. First off, all Russian rockets that are unguided start with the letter S. Now, that is then followed by a number. The number refers to the caliber, aka the size of the actual unguided rocket. So what you saw there was an S24, which is the biggest and fattest rocket that's available for the aircraft. But also there are smaller ones down from that, including the S25, S13, S8, and S5 in that order. Now, the size makes a difference because it carries more explosives in the warhead. And also, it may, but not necessarily always, travel further because they are heavier and they may not go as far. So I would say two kilometers should be your maximum range. That's about a mile or so for launching these. Now, the other thing that makes a big difference is what's inside of your rocket. Russians put all kinds of uh, warheads in there. For example, the most common one is the OF, that is Askolichna Fugasnaya, which means that it is a fragmentation warhead. These don't need to necessarily hit the target dead on, but they'll have all kinds of effects if they land near a target. The other ones are the KOs, and these are the heat warheads, and these ones should nail the target head on if possible because if you miss, they will do almost no damage. These work against tanks and anything that's armored. So OF, go for personnel and unarmed and KO, go for armed targets. Let's take a look at the actual rockets themselves. We've got the S24, that's the big mama. This thing is heavy. Usually you can only carry one or maximum two of them on an airplane. In historical documents, you're supposed to have only the OF, so the fragmentation ones, but in DCS, there's also an S24A, which is apparently a heat warhead. Then we've got the S25. These work against mainly structures or personnel. They basically have a ton of explosives in them and the one with the mortar type tip is the fragmentation one so use that one against soldiers or against soft targets the fragments will have a heck of a range the other one's got against bunkers there's also an s25l i haven't found a place or time to use these or how to use them but apparently they are laser guided so if you know where they are let me know in comments Next up are the S-13s. Usually these guys come in a pod of five rockets and most planes will carry them. The next group are the S-8s. These come in all sizes and varieties, anything from heat, so against armored vehicles, fragmentation against everything, uh, illumination, haven't figured out how to use those, as well as color marking ones which I use to basically designate targets for other groups to attack because I like to do kamikaze dives on heavily fortified enemy positions. So the S8s are pretty common. They're all over the place and they come in pods of 20 unless you're on an SU-27 or a 33 and you can take a double, which means you can have 40 per pylon. All right, finally, you've got the S5s. These are normally on MI-24. These are small little rockets and, uh, well, they work, they fly, they blow stuff up, they're okay. Nothing too special about them, but they're the weakest of the bunch. So that is the lineup of the actual rockets that are available, but let's take a look at the actual aircraft and see what we've got and what we can use on the aircraft themselves. All right, our first rock star is the MiG-29. It's pylons three and two and five and six can carry unguided rockets, which means that we can drop 
both the S8 and the S24 rockets on there. So you can either carry a whole bunch of S8 rockets, that's 40 per each side of the wing, or you can carry 20 on one wing as well as one S24 rocket. Good setup. Now, let's go to a dedicated ground attack aircraft, the Su-25. The Su-25 is pretty much born to carry munitions and all kinds of munitions. So the Su-25 will carry both unguided rockets on every single pylon except for the very two outer ones and in case of an Su-25T it will not use the center pylon because that is for the Phantasmagoria illumination tracking pod. You can carry S-13s, S-25s, S-24s, S-8s and even the S-5s on the Su-25. You can load up every kind of every single missile onto this aircraft unguided rocket I mean and then go for a test drive and have fun blowing stuff up. SU-33 is our next contender. SU-33 is well designed for carrying all sorts of air to ground munitions and can carry quite a few rockets. It's got two pylons that are capable of carrying them. They're pylons 4 and 3. Now a pylon 3 will actually be able to take a double which means that you can carry two sets of S-13s for a total of 10 of those per wing instead of a single pylon. Now pylons 8 and 9 will do the same thing. So for example, pylon 9, you can have two of the S-25 rockets and right next to it, you can have one more S-25 rocket or an S-8 rocket. So quite a bit of flexibility and quite a bit of rockets at the SU-33 can carry, which is pretty darn impressive. SU-27 is not a slouch either. SU-27 though has a compromise and that is you can either carry rocket pods on pylon 3 or you can carry ET missiles. So this is a tough choice. If you know you're going into an area that has no competition, you can throw pylons 8 and 3 to carry air to ground rockets. But if you know you're going into some sort of a fight, you're going to be in trouble because you'll need to have ETs with you. All right, choppers. I don't fly choppers too much, but MI-24 is a chopper that can definitely hold its own. And it's got two sets of inner pylons that you can carry air to ground rockets on. And this is pylons 2, 3, 4, and 5. Big selection there, you have the S5s, the S24s, the S13s, or the S8s in all types and varieties. You can definitely load up the Mi-24 with quite a few rockets and uh, go and send some presents to your hostiles that way. And you can have a nice mix of them as well. You know, if you're gonna reenact Rambo. If we go to something a little bit newer, and that is the K-50, our selection definitely drops because the K-50 is designed for newer guided rockets, but it can still carry some rocket pods um, on all of its pylons. So one, two, three, and four can carry a wide variety of things such as the S-8s or the S-13s, but it's definitely not designed for carrying a lot of different rocket pods. It's all about guided weapons. And last but definitely not least, is the phenomenal MI-8. MI-8 has a total of six hardpoints, and boy, oh boy, you can load it up with S-8s. No, you've got no choice in variety of the pods you can hang. You can just hang up S-8s, but you can hang up a lot of them. As a matter of fact, you hang up so many S-8s that you're gonna have to go into a 102% overweight situation, and you're gonna have to pull back some fuel. So load them up, take off, and deliver all kinds of havoc to your enemies with this helicopter because it can definitely bring a lot of firepower out to the field so there you have it that is the helicopter loadout and the aircraft loadout for unguided rockets su-33 su-25 and the mia are your best friends when it comes to unguided rockets and so subscribing to this channel give it a thumbs up like share and comment Plasma 1945 is out.